Dear future husband. So here's the thing, right, babe? I've been thinking a lot um, about life and, you know, situations that happen in life. And I've been thinking a lot about privilege, um, about how some people have more privilege, like you and I have got male privilege, you know? Um, so I've been thinking about things like that. And basically, you know, some things have happened over the past couple of weeks or so that has made me really think about privilege, basically. And I think one of the benefits of being in a solid and good relationship, Sayang, is being able to have conversations, you know? It's why I started this series of Love Letters, because it wasn't just so much of just hopeful aspirations to, you know, write letters to the guy I'll one day marry. This was a chance for me to have a conversation with you, to begin a conversation with you, to initiate a conversation with you about all kinds of things. And I think a really, really solid relationship, a really good one, the communication is key. We can talk about all kinds of things. So here's the thing. I want to go into a bit of a race today. And here's the thing that I don't know your race. You know, you could be Indian, you could be Chinese, you could be white, you could be Afro-American. I have no idea, right? Having said that, this topic today is basically me just sharing things that have happened to me. Either all over all the years of me growing up or even recently. And yeah, so let's talk about Chinese privilege. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure why I felt this was a topic I needed to talk about or why this is a conversation I need to have. Simply because I'm the kind of person who just, I'm all unicorns and sunshines and light and love and all of those things. But sometimes things happen or situations occur that just make my blood boil, that make me feel the word discriminated i feel that's the best word discriminated against because of my race and when it comes from a particular subset of people after what it kind of gets to you it chips away at the pieces of your soul and i feel this message while you know obviously it's a love letter to you sayang it's also a letter to people who may not recognize they have privilege and to help them check their privilege perhaps so let's talk about Chinese privilege. Chinese privilege is when a manager, happened recently, when as a manager, you get to ask somebody and go, you know, do you speak Cantonese? As if everybody should speak Cantonese, even if they're not of the Chinese race. Or as a manager, you can tell someone, you know, maybe you should learn Cantonese because it will help for better communication. Bitch, when was the last time you were going to learn Tamil? I think, you know, maybe you should learn Tamil. It'll help with communication. Or when you're at work and, you know, you have a group of Chinese friends together. You're Chinese. Remember, Chinese privilege. You're Chinese and you get to have conversations with them in a language of your choice. Mandarin, Cantonese, Hokkien, whichever. And exclude somebody else who's standing right there. And make them feel like, you know, they don't matter. Like, you don't need to hear, like, they don't need to know what you're talking about. You can just have a little conversation with yourself and just ignore the other person. That is Chinese privilege, just so you know. Chinese privilege is that the stereotype of you is being a businessman, of someone who's money savvy, who knows how to run businesses. Whereas, apparently, all Indians <clears throat> are drunkards, are alcoholic, are all kinds of shitty things. And you know what? After a while, that affects people. Mentally, it's, it becomes like a DNA of a family, of a structure, of a race. Chinese privilege. Chinese privilege is being able to put up job postings or rental postings. And you know, you can't be racist. You can't say, oh, I only want Chinese people. You can't. So what you do? You put, oh, we want Mandarin-speaking people. We want Cantonese-speaking people. Bitch, that's racism. Chinese privilege, and this legit happened to me when I was growing up, so I don't know if that friend of mine is going to see this video. This legit happened to me, where a friend, a Chinese friend, can make a joke like this. You know, what do you call an Indian? Uh, you, you know, you could flip it either way. What do you call Indian cloning? Pooping. Oh, you want to flip it around? Let's flip it around. What do you call an Indian when they're pooping in the toilet? What are they doing? Cloning. Ah, oh, hell no. 
Chinese, I have an entire list, you know, by the way. I had to like, you know, make sure that everything is listed out so that I'm able to say it. Chinese privilege is being able to go on a dating app and say, no fats, no sissies, no Indians. As if the color of my skin makes me exactly the same as every single person of my race. And you get to disguise it as preference. How often do you see people going up on a dating app and say, no Chinese? Privilege. Chinese privilege is seeing yourself in ads and media and posters and all kinds of things, you know, promotional stuff. But as as Indians, apparently, we only exist during Deepavali. Chinese privilege is spending time in the sun and getting all tanned or lobster baked, depending on you, and go up to your nearest Indian friend and say, Hey, I'm almost as dark as you, lah. Really? Really? Chinese privilege is getting roles in plays because you're fairer and, you know, you, you meet stereotypical beauty standards. Whereas someone who may be darker than you, who probably is a better actor, doesn't get that role. They get the psychic role. Chinese privilege is having your language be a must-get skill. You know, it's good to learn Mandarin because China's a booming market. Whereas my language, whether it's Tamil or Telugu or Malayalam, doesn't really matter. So much so that Indian kids, when they grow up, they feel so shy about their language. Because you know why? Because Chinese privilege is going up to your Indian friends or people you know and go, and making fun of a language that's inherently ours. When was the last time you saw Indian people make fun of Chinese language? It happens, no denying. But Chinese privilege, you get away with shit like that. Chinese privilege is thinking that all Indian romantic scenes are around trees. And that a tree needs to be involved so they can dance around it. Because that's what the kids are taught. And these are some of these things are things that I experienced as a kid. Not even now. Okay? Chinese privilege is being able to talk shit about someone right in front of them in the language of your choice because nobody else understands what you're saying. Chinese privilege is being able to walk into a lift and not have the people in the lift flinch or hold their bags like you're going to steal it. Chinese privilege is being able to walk past the car and not have the car doors suddenly lock because, hey, you're never going to be a robber because you're Chinese. Chinese privilege is being able to walk into a clothing store or any store and not have someone follow you around and not be considered a thief. Chinese privilege is being taken seriously because the color of your skin tone. Whereas if I need to be taken seriously at an interview or anything for that matter, I have to climb a lot more hoops and hurdles. And the last one, the one that gets me the fucking most, is using us to scare your children. Hey, that Appu Nene gonna come and get you. Hey, that guy gonna come here. See, that Indian guy is gonna come and get you. See, the Indian Uncle Mixto is gonna come and get you. Please. Are we horror monsters? Does our skin tone automatically make us able to be demonized? Chinese privilege. Because let's be honest, you, unfortunately, are the ones who teach your kids to have problems with Indians. So, like I said, I'm someone who's all rainbows and unicorns and all of those things. But, after a while, when you go through so much, (laughs) it reaches a point where you're kind of like, enough is enough. I think somebody should say something. See, you must understand, babe. Like I said, I don't know your race. For all you know, babe, you're a Chinese guy. (laughs) Hashtag awkward. Uh, (laughs) But I think the point is this. When people have privilege, they should acknowledge that they have privilege and to use that privilege for good. See, when you use your privilege for good, you make the world a better place. 
But when you don't acknowledge your privilege, you pretend your privilege doesn't exist and you don't fully utilize it, that's when things get messed up. Because I have Chinese friends who I love. I have Chinese friends who I adore. I have Chinese friends who I respect so much. I have best friends who are Chinese. So this is nothing against them. But as we venture into this topic of privilege, because I really think future letters are going to be a little bit about privilege, I think it's good to know when privilege exists and it's good to talk about it and be clear about it and to know what's happening. Anyways, I, I know this was a bit deep and kind of and a bit ranty, but it is what it is. If you don't talk about it, if we don't talk about it, nobody's going to acknowledge it and it's best we start talking about it. Let's create the conversation. Don't do things for. <laughs> anyway, Sam, I love you so much. Um, I spend my days now, you know, thinking about you, talking about you and all of these things and it's part of my message and it's part of my brand and it's super exciting to do that because I never imagined you being a part of my life when I was growing up. So it's nice to be able to do that now. Hope you're doing okay, Sam, and I will see you next week. Bye!